obviously I'd just like to thank the ICO for inviting me to give this um, seminar tonight. Um, and what we're going to cover, well firstly we're going to cover an introduction to dry cow management. We're going to look at some past work and past research in dry cow management. And then we're going to have an overview of a large on-farm trial that was conducted by AFLE in Northern Ireland, um, looking at specifically at what we did and, and some of the results from that study. So just to kick off, what is the objective of a successful dry cow management? And firstly, it's a stress-free calving and healthy calf. We also want a healthy cow post-calving. So minimal risk to met metabolic problems such as fatty liver and ketosis, and minimum risk to infectious diseases such as metritis uh, and mastitis. We want that cow to have a potential to produce high levels of milk, but we not necessarily want her to produce that very fast. We want a high peak with a sustainable lactation during the, the whole lactation. Um, we want a cow that cycles quickly and goes back and calf easily. And ultimately, we want the farmer to make more money so that his business is sustainable into the future. So what are the main challenges to feeding the dry cow? Well, firstly, this cow does not follow um, the, the prediction models that, that work off the intake capacity generally. Um, throughout a lactation. Um, on the approach to calving, this cow's dry matter decreases significantly, often to below 10 kilos dry matter. And essentially, this means that the cow is not meeting her energy requirements. Um, ultimately, what we want post-calving is for this dry cow to have a rapid increase in dry matter intake um, so that she doesn't fall into too severe a negative energy balance in that post-calving period. So simultaneously, while this drop in intake is happening, we have an exponential increase in the energy requirements for pregnancy. So on top of maintenance requirements, this equates to an average daily energy requirement of 107 megajoules per day during this period. So therefore, in the three weeks prior to calving, it is highly likely that this cow is already in negative energy balance. So just a quick look now at some current dry cow theories. And the first of these is to feed a high quality diet to put body condition on the cow. Now previous work at AFBE has suggested that this is extremely difficult. In a study uh, conducted, extreme diets pre-calving were, were, were used in terms of energy balance to try and adjust body condition score. Um, but the adjustments were extremely small um, and body condition score at calving. And plus, the use of, of extreme energy diets can also lead to insulin resistance and, and a reduced liver function in that post-calving period. I suppose also I want to mention a decrease in body condition score. If the farmer is very fat, cows are dry off, and he tries to decrease body condition score, this can impede mammary development and fetal development, and also deplete protein reserves for that post-calving period. So the second theory is to feed concentrates pre-calving to allow the rumen to adapt to concentrates to facilitate higher intakes post-calving. And this is often referred to now as, as steaming up prior to calving. So what we're trying to do in this is to promote the adaptation of the rumen epithelium, the microflora and rumen capacity for maximum volatile fatty acid absorption in that post-calving period. So the idea is that increased propionate in the rumen will increase or encourage increased surface area. And, and some work done by Friggin in 2004 would suggest this could be the case. However, there is a lot of other science out there to suggest that this type of feeding strategy has little impact on dry matter intake post-calving. Um, Kide et al. done some work at Hillsborough where they fed five kilograms of concentrate pre-calving versus zero, and it had no impact whatsoever on post-calving dry matter intake levels. So the next area I suppose what we want to discuss is, is feeding bulky straw or bulky forage diets to maintain room and fill. Um, as I mentioned earlier, all the prediction models on dry matter intake incorporate physical constraint. However, during the peri-partium period, these models no, are no longer applicable. And we can get declines in dry matter intake of up to 30% in that last week um, pre-Calvin. Science, again, has shown no real benefit um, of, of feeding 
high bulk diets pre-calving to post-calving dry matter intakes. Um, and, and again, this is something that's implemented quite often, but from a scientific perspective, has yielded very little improvements in post-calving. So the next theory, um, which is to restrict nutrient intake to encourage the cow to start mobilizing body tissue. I mean, this was probably suggested by Brigham's et al. Um, back in, in the 2000s, early 2000s. And, and this theory is all about accepting the fact that the cow is going to mobilize fat post-calvin and preparing the liver to deal with that mobilization in that post-calvin period. The main issue is that the cow mobilizes a lot of fat um, post-calvin. She has a genetic propensity to do this. And if you have a lot of, of fatty acids entering the liver, the liver, if it's not conditioned, um, in theory, cannot deal with these very well. So you get increased storage of fatty acids in the liver, increasing the risk of fatty liver syndrome and subsequent ketosis. So we want to expose that liver to increased levels of fatty acids pre-calvin to try and facilitate a better capacity to deal with it in the post-calvin period. And lastly, we, we have a, the modification of the mineral status of the dry cow diet to minimize the risk of metabolic disorders post-calving. So again, we're talking about negative decal figures, we're talking about sort of inducing metabolic acidosis in that pre-calving period to avoid um, such ailments like milk fever in that early post-calving period. Um, and, and, a, and a few things are very important here, so, so low potassium forages, um, low levels of calcium, high levels of magnesium, and, and farmers generally implement some combination of all these theories at farm level. Uh, to try and maximize the success of this transition from the dry period to early lactation. So ultimately we can say that at the minute dry cow recommendations are confusion. There is no blueprint for feeding this dry cow, although science does suggest avoid overfeeding where possible, especially in that far off period. Um, but then the farmer has to consider what he does with cows in poor body condition. And there's little science out there um, to assess the effects of different diets at different levels of body condition. So following discussions with stakeholders, um, it was highlighted that some research was needed in this area, and this has led to the current trial that I'm going to talk about, um, which was, was designed to evaluate a, a number of dry cow strategies at farm level in a large scale project, and the subsequent effects on production and fertility. So the objective was to compare a number of dry cow management strategies, as I've said, on 10 Northern Ireland dairy farms and to examine the effects of these on cow fertility health and milk production performance. So in terms of experimental design, um, we had 10 very enthusiastic Northern Ireland dairy farmers involved in this study. Um, there was 1,217 cows recorded over a two-year period. And some of the criteria in selecting these farms uh, was to narrow it down to the high yielding end. So we had an average herd size of 244 cows. Obviously, not all cows were used in the study on, on, on each farm. We had an average concentrate feed level of 2.47 tons per cow per year, and an average milk production of 8,445 liters. So in terms of the experimental design, at tra just before dry off, all cows on each farm were body condition scored. These cows were then allocated um, to nutritional treatments depending on their body condition score group. So as you can see from the graph, um, these cows fell into two body condition score groups, either one to two and a half or 2.75 to five, and then went on. The ones in the low body condition score group were offered one of three nutritional treatments. So forage plus concentrates for the entire dry period. Um, from now on, that will be referred to FC8. Forage plus concentrates for the last three weeks only, FC3, and forage for the entire dry period. Now, for cows within the high body condition score group, um, we omitted the forage plus concentrates for the entire dry period, purely to avoid overfat cows at calving, or the potential for overfat cows at calving, and leading to other problems in that post-calving period. Um, it, it was agreed that because we had the participation of commercial farmers, we didn't want to put their business at risk uh, of increased culling rates or whatever in that post-calving period. 
And I just want to draw your attention to this link at the bottom of this slide. And this is the link to the body condition score recommendations or guide that Dairy Co have in place. So please visit um, this link and, and, and read up on, on how to body condition score cows. And I suppose at this stage I just want to highlight the fact that we body condition scored these cows on a fortnightly basis and the technicians involved um, got very proficient at this and we actually divided each score into a plus, equals and minus category. So we've got very detailed analysis um, of, of the body condition score change in these cows. And just for your information, the average concentrate level fed in that pre calving period was 2.54 kilograms per head per day. So we're just going to move on now and have a look at some of the results. And the first uh, aspect we're going to look at is the effect on body condition score. So this first graph is illustrating the effect of body condition score dry off on body condition score during the dry period and during lactation. So I suppose I just want to highlight at this, at this stage that the majority of cows in the study fell into the low groups of the blue line, 88% of cows, so 88% of the 2, 1,217 cows, apologies, fell into this group and 12% were in the high group, approximately 150 cows. So there was significant effect of body condition score dry off and body condition score change during the dry period with over 0.25 of the body condition score. drop and body condition score at calving with the difference between the two treatments of 0.21 body condition score units. Um, and the mean body condition score at calving for the two groups were in the low group 2.36 and the high group 2.57. Now in the analysis we took this a step further and broke body condition score down into four groups. The low 2.25 2.35 to 2.6, 2.65 to 2.85, and 2.9 plus. But just to give you an indication, 14% of cows fell into the 2.25 and below, 74% of cows fell into 2.35 to 2.6, and 9% of cows into 2.65 and 2.85, and 3% in the 2.9 and above. And you can see from the graph um, that, that these cows tended to go to a target body condition score 12 weeks. Uh, post calving. Now there is evidence in the literature. Um, Garnsworth in 1988 suggest, suggested there was a high correlation between body condition score dry off and body condition score loss during that dry period and early lactation. Friggins in 2004 showed a genetic propensity to lose body condition score in that post calving period, and then Garnsworth in 2006 again suggested that a body condition score that was appropriate for breeding. Um, cows had a genetic propensity to try and achieve this at around 12 weeks of age. And, and the fact that this data set um, backs that up completely uh, is extremely interesting. So moving on now to the nutritional treatment effects on body condition score. And I've separated this into two groups. So we're looking at the larger group first, which was the low body condition score dry off. And then we'll have a look at the high group in a minute. So this is the nutritional treatment. So concentrates for the full eight weeks is the blue line, concentrates for the last three weeks is the red line, and concentrates, or sorry, no concentrates at all is the green line. Now we did find a significant effect of body condition score dry off on the body condition score change during the dry period and the body condition score calving. But as you can see from the graph, practically there's very little difference between these three nutritional treatments. So for a farmer to identify a body condition score change because of feeding concentrates, this level of concentrates during the dry period would be very difficult. I suppose I just want to put one caveat in that, in that hosting cows generally lay down more internal fat for a, for, a, for a small change in subcutaneous fat. So there's no doubt that the internal fat differences may have been much, much greater. And it also highlights the practical difficulties of altering um, body condition score during this dry period. So in terms of the high group, again, you can see that practically there's very little impact of feeding concentrates in that last three weeks of lactation on body condition score change during the dry period, body condition score at Calvin, or even body condition score in that early lactation period. Um, and, and I just remind you at this stage that there was no eight-week nutritional treatment uh, for this high group. 
So moving on now, we want to have a look at the effects of, of body condition score nutrition in the dry period on milk yield in that post um, calving period. And we're first going to look at, again, the effects of body condition score dry off and milk yield. And, and I want to remind you that, again, the group sizes were very different here. The groups were unbalanced because they were only selected on body condition score. So whilst there was no significant difference in milk yield between the two groups, we did find a tendency for cows um, with a higher body condition score dry off to produce more milk. And in fact, during months three, four, five, six, and seven, there was a significant difference in milk yield where the body condition score group, uh, the high body condition score group produced more milk. And there's some theories behind why this might be, um, that because of lipolysis in the high body condition score group, um, it would provide more energy substrate for non-mammary tissue and allow dietary energy glucose to go to, more of the dietary energy glucose to go to lactosynthesis. And again, this could be largely driven by internal fat, but I suppose I want to highlight at this stage as well that there was no significant difference in these first two months of lactation. So there is a, maybe a suggestion there that both sets of animals had the buffering capacity to support milk production here, but that the cows with the low body condition score sorry, uh, lost that buffering capacity and were relying solely on energy intake, whilst the, the higher body condition score cows perhaps had that buffering capacity further into lactation. So moving on, um, the effect of nutritional treatment on milk yield. Um, first of all, in the low body condition score group, and you can see here there is no effect whatsoever um, of nutritional treatment on milk yield, and as well, no effect on milk constituents either. And I mean, this is very much in agreement with previous research. Um, research conducted by myself and others in 2011, where we, we fed very, very different dietary energy contents pre calvin and attempt to adjust that body condition score and still find no effect in that post calvin period of milk yield. And also Katie in 2001 who fed very different levels of concentrate pre calvin and found no effect uh, on milk yield in that post calvin period. And it maybe also suggests that, that perhaps, uh, although we have no data to back it up, that, that intakes were not significantly affected by nutritional treatment in the dry period um, as you might sort of predict that uh, if there was any benefits of exposure to concentrates in the dry period, that higher intakes would drive higher milk yield in that post calvin period, but there doesn't seem to be any evidence of that in this study. So in the high group, um, again, no significant effects um, of nutrition coming through um, on, on the level of milk production, but you will notice from this graph that the, the overall milk yield is higher uh, in, in, in the high body condition score groups, uh, picking at 44 litres here compared to 40 litres in the previous slide. And again, there was no effect on milk constituents. So the effect of forage quality during the dry period on body condition score and milk yield, I mean, I've done an analysis on this and I thought it was quite interesting, so that's why it's included, that the higher forage quality um, had a significantly uh, improved body condition score during the dry period, a significantly lower change in body condition score during this period, um, but yet had no effect on milk production or milk constituents in that post calvin period. So whilst energy um, intake is having an impact, a slight impact on, on body condition score, um, it's not having any impact in that post calvin period. And again, I want to just emphasize that these differences uh, in body condition score would not be able to be picked up farm level. Um, the large data set allows us, I suppose, uh, uh, to differentiate between differences between these groups, but as you can see from the means, um, it would be extremely hard to pick up. So moving on to look at the effect of body condition score dry off on calf birth weight and calving difficulty. Um, as you can see from the p-values, there was a tendency for cows with a higher body condition score um, at dry off to have a higher calf birth weight and uh, a more difficult calving. Now the calving difficulty scores um, in, used in the experiment were 100 for unassisted, 200 for assisted without a calving aid, 300 for assisted with a calving aid, and 400 for veterinary assistance, and 500 for a cesarean section. 
So you can see that the majority of these animals calved unassist, unassisted or assisted without um, a calving aid, but there was again no effect of nutritional treatment on calf birth weight or calving difficulty. And I suppose I just want to maybe emphasize at this stage that farmers in general will have probably uh, a gut feeling that if you fed concentrates for the whole dry period it's going to encourage calf growth and, and maybe encourage difficult calvins, but the data set that we have here would very much say that it has a very minimal effect, in fact there's no effect on calf birth weight or, or, or calf calving difficulty and indeed the calf birth weights on the three nutritional treatments were 43.7 kilograms, 43.6 and 43.4. So moving on to the effects on fertility, um, again there's been many links with body condition score loss in the post-calving period with poor fertility, but I mean our data shows no significant effect of body condition score dry off on fertility or no significant effect on nutritional treatments. Now the data did show a tendency for body condition score dry off, a high body condition score dry off to have a lower conception rate the first and second service with a p-value of 0.099 and the, the low body condition score group had a conception rate of 55.9% compared to 47.4 in the high. But again, when you looked at the overall conception rate, there was no difference between the two treatments. Um, overall, on the 10 herds involved in the study, the mean conception rate the first service was 31.2%. Uh, the mean conception rate the first and second service was 54.9 and the mean overall conception rate was 70.3. So moving on to look at the effects of body condition score at dry off and culling rate. And this was quite uh, an interesting result. Um, the low body condition score group had a higher percentage of animals culled in that first 60 days of lactation. And this first 60 days would be sort of the risk period for cows especially with low body condition score. Um, and I, I just at this point don't want to discuss any more of that, but just keep the, that sort of p-value and figures in mind for, for a couple of slides time where we'll discuss it in further. Um, and there was no effect of body this score group at dry off on overall culinate as you can see from the results here. Although I would say that the overall culinate rate of 21.5% for the whole study is lower. Um, than, than, current, than previously reported figures um, where we're seeing as high as 35% in the US. So this is having a look at the effect of nutritional treatment uh, during the dry period on culling rates and as you can see from the results, no effect whatsoever of nutritional treatment in preventing cows being culled in the first 60 days of lactation or the overall culling rate. But this is not the full story. Now we analyzed this data a little bit further where we broke again the groups down into below 225, 235 to 260, 265 to 285 and 290 plus and looked at the nutritional treatment effects and we actually found a very interesting finding um, that cows in this very low body condition score group that received no concentrates during the dry period had a significantly higher culling rate in that first 60 days um, of lactation. And this culling rate was a value of 21.5%. And if you remember back a couple of slides, there was a significant difference between the culling rates in the first 60 days in low and high body condition score groups. Well, it's this group of animals that's driving that. These very thin cows that are receiving no concentrates during the dry period um, have no reserves whatsoever going to lactation. Their immune competence is reduced, although we didn't measure this. Um, we can say that from previous research, their immune competence will be reduced, and they're highly susceptible to disease and culling from the herd. And this data, from a large data set, backs that up um, really, really well in identifying these cows as being high risk for culling in that early period, if not addressed uh, in late lactation or during the dry period. So. We're at the end of the presentation. I just had a few take-home messages. Um, body condition score dry-off has a greater influence on milk production and body condition score trajectory through the dry period into lactation than nutrition. Um, significant changes in body condition score, as we know, are difficult to achieve during the dry period. 
and previous research has backed this up, and this just reiterates that. So if you're trying to alter body condition score of cows, uh, dry off, and I do appreciate that when, when a farmer dries cows off, he has a wide variation of body condition score within that group, uh, and, and it's really difficult to manage that group um, as, as, as a whole when you have very thin cows and very fat cows uh, mixed in the same group. So, I mean, there is future research ongoing at the minute to look at addressing body condition score in late lactation, and this, this can be achieved by altering the protein level in the diet um, in late lactation, so you sacrifice a bit of milk production but keep the energy high, make sure that the, the, the ERDP levels are correct so it doesn't um, um, have any impact on intake and, and drive body condition score up in that late lactation period. And the final point is that cows with a very low body condition score dry off on a low plane of nutrition during that dry period were at higher risk of being culled in the first 60 days of lactation. And that's a really important point that these cows have no energy reserves and they need to be addressed in this late lactation period to try and give them some backup for for that early lactation period.